Hi, yes, yeah, Jackie here with the LGFA, and we're back for our second show of the uh, TG Cahar Championship season. Delighted to be joined by two guests who were with me uh, last week as well, Emma Murphy from Dublin and Michelle Ryan from Waterford. How are you guys? How's things? All good? Good, thanks. Good, thanks, Jackie. Excellent. Uh, Emma, you made your uh, co-commentary debut with us uh, on a, a windy uh, afternoon so tell us about that there was uh, tales of, of cherry pickers and being hoisted onto uh uh yeah, good great. vantage points go on take it away the floor is yours <laughs> yeah it was great yeah and it's uh, it's always good when you arrive to the knoll and you just know it's going to be windy and take one of the john deere tractor and know that's exactly where you're going to be spending the next two hours it was highly entertaining yeah straight up in the cherry picture picker myself jerome the camera the whole shebang but uh yeah apparently you could hear us perfectly so yeah no it was um yeah look it was it was a great game well, a great game from a Dublin perspective um Cavan made a good fist of it kind of in the first kind of 10 or 15 minutes because they had the wind uh they, they had won sauce to chose to go play with the wind uh but Dublin were just unbelievable and ter- their defense their hunger was just you know it was fantastic um and they came out with a really strong win yeah you were obviously impressed with them then Emma yeah, really impressed. Like some, really impre- Like the the kind of the energy and the fitness levels are just uh, just phenomenal. Um, there was very much kind of a a one up one back kind of approach. Very kind of me desk a little bit. You know, maybe reacting okay. to that. But you know, um, breaking from the from the wing backs forwards, somebody hanging back. The half backs um, were really energetic. Kate Sullivan was extremely energetic up and down the right wing. Really creative. Um, and then for the for the Gavin wing back, it kind of really fell for her. But in Kate Sullivan was replaced. She was replaced by Nicole Owens, who also then uh, got on her bike and like literally got two goals and really really quickly. So um, yeah, a tough day out for Gavin. Um, but a really all around great performance from the Dubs. A standout from Sinead Goldrick. Sinead Ahern was busy as well. So um, it's good to see kind of um, a lot of the the players who've been you know stalwarts for a long time are really kind of stood up for them as well on Sunday or on Saturday. Yeah, it's it's. Um... They did show a bit, Michelle. I don't know. Did you see much of of, of the the Dublin game? But um, I just saw the clips of Nicole Owen scoring one absolute bullet, and then the other one was a more calm and and, and measured finish. Not that the first one wasn't, but the second one was really clinical and and, and beautifully taken. So, um, I suppose what can you read into a game like that, Michelle? You know, okay, Emma said that Cavan gave it a, a good fist to an extent, but obviously, you know, the Dublin would have been the pre-match favourites and expected to win the game, but I guess Emma has touched on it there. They performed very well and, you know, that's that that's the, the name of the game, performance. And that's the thing, I suppose, like they're, they're looking down the road and let's be honest about us, like rightly so. Um, and with games like this, where you know there's a lot said about I suppose the, the perceived gap that's between certain teams in, in ladies football and like I mean I suppose we'd be foolish to say that that doesn't exist and it does exist but when a game like when Dublin are going into a game like that McBone is looking at tweaking things he's looking further down the line he's looking to make sure that they don't perform any less to their standards because they can't be seen to have any chink in their armour they can't even mentally to, to, to take another team for granted and to feel like they're going out on, on any given day just, just to fulfil a fix that they can't show that they can't they can't play like that they've got to tweak the little things so when they do come up against the the likes of Mead um, and, and I suppose a few other like the Mayos the Galloways Corks and so on that 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 isn't there because you, you can't switch that on on those big days you can't switch it on against those other teams it has to be so I've no doubt that McBowen and the Dublin girls were sticking to their game plan they were giving as much people as much time on, on the pitch as possible um, and being ruthless because that's the end of the day what they have to be they have to be ruthless no matter who it is they're coming up against because if they're not doing it in the first round the second round of the championship who says they're going to automatically as I said turn it on come this quarter final semi final and final should they get there absolutely yeah just looking through the other headlines from the weekend um and, and taking you back to Burr where you were uh Michelle Kingdom make impressive start and Donegal outlast Waterford to grab crucial win so Waterford were right in that game Michelle they were right in that game and I know from I suppose even looking at the girls afterwards and, and management and I've spoken to one or two of them. I mean, they are absolutely gutted to have, yeah. yeah, to have not have come away with a win. And I will say with the win because some people have said to me like they could have won the game. To me, they should have won the game. Um, and I have to say full credit for the way they approached the game because even though it's not pretty to watch as a spectator, um, they went out very defensive in the first half. 
it worked out very well for them because they've learned that they are conceding goals and conceding scores a bit too easily in previous matches. They set out their stall that they were not going to do that and they were going to make sure that they were still in the game come half time, which is exactly what they did. And they did go a little bit more all out attack in the second half and they reaped the benefits of it. They introduced Aileen Wall as the full forward line, line, long ball in the top to her. She was a target. She didn't get on the scoreboard, but she was laying it off and creating chances. Breed McMall came in and won a lot of frees, won a lot of possessions, set up a lot of scores. A goal came from Ashton Milani, also another substitute. And while they, while in going a little bit more attack, they did leave themselves a little bit more open at the back. It was through freeze from Jerry McLaughlin that that, Ger- that Donegal stayed in the game and ultimately, to my mind, won the game. I know Watford missed a penalty and, and a few frees as well. But I just think if that wasn't the day for Watford to get a championship win in one of the first or second rounds of, I, I don't know when will be, because I know Max, he said after the game, he said he was happy. To my mind, he should have been happy with, the fact that they won, I wouldn't have been happy from his perspective with how they won or their p- performance. I think Watford asked them an awful lot of questions and it would have give me doubts for Johnny Gall going forward. Okay, and I'll, I'll put this question to you as well. Michelle, should we be keeping an eye on Kerry? I mean, uh, Division 2 champions last year were Mead, went on to win the All-Ireland Senior Championship. Division 2 champions this year are Kerry. Uh, you can finish that sentence or not, as the case may be. Uh, but, I mean, they beat a very highly rated Armagh team in the Division 2 final. And now they've gone and they've taken out Galway in the first round and probably assured themselves of a spot in the knockout stages. Um, you know, maybe a couple of late goals for Galway, put a bit of gloss on the, on the scoreline as well. How good were Kerry, Michelle? And I suppose just on that last point, the concession laid on is is that a concern or was the foot off the gas at that stage where where are they or how 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 good were they um well we were talking about whether we were proud of our crystal balls last week and i have to say myself and rona both tipped Kerry to win that match on saturday uh we actually had a conversation just among us and the rest of the commentary team before the match and we were the only two who kind of felt that Kerry, you know we're going to pull off a win and i was i don't know i was certain last saturday that they were, and I think it it it's it has a similar feel to I suppose having watched them build through the league and come over and and like they still defeated you know Arma um in the league final impressively mm. um I, they they did lose to Cork in the Munster final but they lost by five points and having missed an, a rake of scores in that game as well so to my mind coming into that game momentum was with them they were building nicely and I think they they are a team that show that they are learning from each game um, and they are believing in themselves with each game so I wasn't one bit surprised with what happened last Saturday I really felt like they were in control of what they were doing I felt like they knew and believed in each other there was an actual atmosphere among them even watching them after the final whistle that you you can sense this when a team just things are going well the atmosphere as well they're buying into what's happening they are backing each other up there's a bit of fun in the camp as well you can sense that as well they believe in their management team there's a good camaraderie among their management team and the players um, and that was to be sensed at the game on Saturday um, they, to my mind, yes, they, they controlled the game from start to finish. The, the scoreline did favour to Galway. I do think Kerry just maybe took their eye off it there for the last few minutes of the game, um, which is disappointing, and they'll be disappointed with that. But I have to say they were so impressive all over the field. The, their movement of the ball, their their strength, their their delivery, their execution. I mean, Louise Maria Hertig is, seems like someone who's playing in her first or second year, not to mind in her 15th or 16th year. She, she's just an incredible operator inside that full forward line but you know what really stuck out to me is that their attack was actually more spearheaded by their full back Kaylee Cronin and centre back Emma Costello nearly than ever than anybody else because everybody moves everybody pushes up and they move with power and pace I mean Kaylee Cronin's ball in to to Lorraine Scanlon for for that goal was just the vision and that vision existed the same way Eric McLean delivered that ball into Neve Carmody for what was an absolute screamer of a goal as well. So I, I just think there, there, there is so much about Kerry that I really, really like. Galway, I kind of had a feeling coming in are just, I, I just didn't feel like they were moving in the right direction. They've had a few obstacles to overcome this year. As to your answer to your question, whether or not I feel sense that it's kind of a, a me of last year, I, I'm not going to go there just yet. But I, if from a Kerry perspective and a Kerry supporter, I would be very happy where they are. Most people would have assumed Galway was going to come out, I suppose, on top of this group. 
Kerry will be very happy with that win over Galway. They get to sit back now with Galway playing um, uh, Westmead and then prepare for that Westmead game. And I think it's very promising for Kerry to be reaching the latter stages of the championship. I'll ask you that question about Kerry again so in a couple of weeks. We'll see, <laughs> we'll see where you're at then, right? Um, so obviously in the senior championship as well, we had Mayo uh, beating Tipperary and we also had a very comfortable win for the champions made against Monaghan. Um, Emma, the intermediate quarterfinal lineup has been completed. Um, and we are now looking at Wexford against Tyrone, Loud against Roscommon, Longford against Clare, and Leash against Wicklow. Looking back at the weekend, what was your? I think for me, Leash beating Tyrone was a was yeah, a statement. A uh, are you on the same page? Yeah, Leash, Leash beating. I thought that was going to be an absolute ding dong, and Leash were excellent, mm. and like they were excellent last year as well. But that's it. Was a standout performance for them, uh, for them at the weekend. Uh, the manner of the of the win as well was. Um, was excellent. There was a couple of other kind of you know results that did kind of throw it. You, you could throw your eye at uh, Clare being beaten by Loud. Um, yeah. I don't think many people really see saw it coming, um, but Loud have been excellent. And to go you know to go to Clare and beat Clare in their own backyard, um, you know Clare would have been odds on favour to to win that one. So um, you know the the intermediate championship now is you know is it's looking interesting. Um, the quarterfinals have panned out, you know, kind of the way they they should have. Even though there was a couple of defeat for Roscommon at the weekend against Longford, uh, but they're going to play. Uh, they're going to play loud. Um, so you know they, that that's kind of ended up the way you kind of thought it would, but not. But both of them actually had you know won and lost the reverse fixtures. So um, yeah, no. Look, Wexford and Wicklow both kind of taking along into the quarterfinals as well. But you know, Leash for me have really you know, stood up um, last week and you know, kind of changing a few people's minds as well. You know, they they really kind of um have, have stepped up. Their conditioning is excellent. Uh, their power play is excellent. Mo Nerney is creating chaos in there um in the full forward line. And they're they're playing kind of with, with smiles on their faces. They're playing with, you know, there's a real camaraderie about them as well. Um and they look really dangerous. Um so yeah, that's good leash are very, very strong at the moment. Yeah, they're a contender. They really are. Like, you know, you'd say that Tyrone coming down from senior would probably be favourites to go back up, but Leash have really put the cat among the pigeons there. Keep your Sunday week free. Um, Emma will have you, uh, hopefully, if you're, if you're up for it, back on the back on the cherry picker or wherever, wherever the case uh, Emma, everyone, everyone thinks this job is all glamour when you go see a cherry picker or the commentary boxes. Or a John Deere. <laughs> up and down but it's when you've been asked to be taken down can we actually come down yeah <laughs> yeah the key is to have as many layers as possible anyway and a hair yeah because it can be uh a kind of a under underestimated kind of coldness at times when you're uh, when you're at a match even on uh, at this time of year especially when you're standing about for a while um it's, it's silage season around where i live now so we have seen plenty of john deers you just don't expect them maybe on the, on the side of a pitch at times but there you go <laughs> Um, what are we looking forward to um, coming up at the weekend, folks? You're you're at a you're on duty again on Sunday, Michelle. So we've Cavan against Mayo, and we've Armagh against Mead, which which I think will give uh, us a fair indication of where both of these sides are. Armagh, I always have a feeling about Armagh that they're on the cusp of something, and Mead, of course, are the champions. So um, one to look forward to, Michelle. Yeah, definitely, and I think I think maybe for me as well, the Cork Donegal match is going to be interesting. Yeah. So I think those three are, are kind of I suppose the standout fixtures to my mind. Um, obviously, Cavan Mayo, Armagh, and me are going to be live on, on TG Cahar. I I agree with you. I, I'm looking forward to seeing Armagh um, and how they've I suppose regathered and you know, got together again come to come again now after after their league disappointment um we we know the talent that exists among them they've they've been there thereabouts threatening to 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 get to you know all Ireland finals and semi-finals and so on and um this is going to be the ultimate test of them now in this group um obviously the only other side of that is me they're coming into it not really having been tested last week as to whether or not that impacts their performance, whether or not they are a little bit, I suppose, you know, lethargy coming into it in the sense that, you know, we have they haven't really been able to get up to scratch and up to speed with the game last from the game last week. So I think it's going to be an interesting battle. I think 
you know, two very, very different styles of play because Armagh are all about breaking and moving fast and slick movement and so on. Meads obviously have their defensive system and they break very quick as well. Um, you have some of the best footballers on display in, in both sides. So I, I, I think, to my mind, I think I just think Meads should come through it, but I'm looking forward to seeing how Armagh pit themselves against them, to be honest. Um, Calvin then and Mayo. Look, I suppose the interesting thing from a Mayo perspective, and this is why... I was a bit reluctant to be so confident in Galway last weekend as to when Galway won the Econop title, obviously they, they played Mayo and Mayo were are missing so four or the five of their, their key players um, f- from the AFL and are not making themselves available to championship this, this season, which um, look, it, it's, it's, it's disappointing from a ladies football perspective. Um, but may, I suppose how that is impacting Mayo in championship is against a team. I know Cavan are going to be disappointed after their, their loss to Dublin last week. Um, but how they are going to equip themselves going forward, I think, is a question in everybody's mind as, as the opposition gets better. So I think that's what everybody's going to be tuning in to see um, how that goes. Because in that group, you know, you have Mayo, Dublin, Tipperary and Cavan before going on a sports form in the last number of years, most people will be saying you're expecting Mayo and Dublin to come out of that group. I may that may still be true, but I think I'd like to see just the quality of what Mayo have um this time round. So you saw Calvin obviously up close and personal then, Emma. So do they have the capability to trouble Mayo, do you think? Yeah, I think they do. I think they do. Um, you know, they were well organized, Calvin. They were like well organized, they were well set up. Um, as I said, they kind of stayed in it for, you know, the, the first kind of 15 minutes or so. Um, but, you know, Dublin were just superior. I haven't seen Dublin play uh, at that pace and at that speed for a long time. They were just very, very hungry and there was a massive want in them. Um, and unfortunately for Cavan, they were just at the receiving end of that. So, you know, looking at Mayo last weekend, I, I thought Tip would test them a bit more than what they did. Um, to be fair, I didn't think it was worth a kind of a 10 point gap in the end. Um, so, yeah, Cavan can test, can test Mayo this weekend. And I think it'll be, you know, look, Cavan are playing at home. Um, it's, you know, that's a that's a, a good factor as well for Cavan. Um, so it will be a big test for Mayo to see how they can kind of come out on the end of that. And, you know, that group, that group's not over just yet. Um, it isn't over just yet, even though, you know, there was the two big wins last week for, for Dublin and Mayo. And on the, the other groups as well, you know, the three team groups are going to be really interesting this weekend. This is make or break for the three team groups. It always fascinates me. You know, Armagh versus Mead, if Mead win that, you've got a, a shootout then between Monaghan and Armagh for the, for the second spot in the in, in the group. Um, and the same, you know, Waterford will be watching the Cork-Donegal match, probably hoping that Donegal possibly beat Cork and then that they've got a good shootout then against Cork. So um, it is kind of, it's turning into knockout football within group sections as well, which is always, um, which always puts the panic on, on teams as well. And when that pressure comes on, you can see anything can kind of happen as well. So, um, yeah, the four team, the four team group is is a little bit more, um, a little bit more kind of structure and less, um, less chaotic. But um, it'll be a really, really interesting weekend. And Westmead, they're out for the first time as well um, against Galway, and they'll be hoping to, you know, put on a performance as well. You know, a stepping away from kind of disappointing league um, and a, a disappointing kind of you know championship for them in Leinster as well in the round robin that they can actually put on a performance against Galway as well. Yeah, so we've plenty to look forward to. So just going through the fixtures of Cavan against Mayo, Tipperary against Dublin, Galway West Mead, Cork Donegal, and Armagh Mead in senior, and then um, in the junior championship, New York are back and they're coming to Antrim on uh, Sunday. So clocking up the air miles and they're heading down to Limerick then the following um, Wednesday down to the to the Gaelic grounds, which is lovely for them to to come to play Antrim in David Park in Belfast, and then a trip down to to um the Gaelic grounds in in, in TUS Gaelic grounds in Limerick it's it's lovely to see them back and I suppose it's another sh- sign of of things returning Emma to exactly where yeah. they should be yeah it's and it's a kind of good, a good sign for kind of the growth of ladies football as well and I know that junior championship is is very interesting you know it's great to see New York coming for the two weeks and um hopefully they equip themselves well against both Antrim and Limerick um Antrim beat Limerick last weekend which surprised me yeah. to be honest yeah. in Limerick's yeah. backyard I wasn't expecting that um, watched it back and Antrim were they were they were clinical and they were smart and strong yeah it was a close match but um never kind of saw them kind of losing it and it was a big win for Carlo then um over Derry um Carlo looking really really strong as we they spoke are. about last week and 
Fermanagh, um, Fermanagh got a good win under the belts as well against against London. So, yeah, that that championship I think is um, it, it's a uh, it's a it's a nice championship. It's um, there's a couple of teams there that that really could win it, but great to see New York um, and London and participating in the championship as well. Good stuff, guys. We'll just finish it off with um, a brief little chit chat. Michelle, are you on holidays yet, or what's the what's the story? When are you knocking off? Yeah, we are on holidays. Yeah, um, finished yes. up there <laughs> nearly two weeks ago now. So, just getting the last bit, I suppose, the summer test corrections done, and um, yeah, diving into the championship action this year. So that's yeah, just one job to the next step, Jackie. <laughs> it never stops. It never never stops. Um, and Emma, now that you're you're, you're settled into uh, the hot seat, um, your Twitter bio. Hope you don't mind. Because it's very interesting, right? It comes director for Barry Andrews MEP, um, then obviously South Dublin uh, County Council, Fianna Fáil uh, member, councillor, and Fairhouse Bohr Nabrina. Have I pronounced that right? Yeah, the mount, the only mountains in Dublin, so right in the middle. I got the rural. I represent the rural kind of area of Dublin, so all the yeah. way from the bottom of Fairhouse, which is quite close to Tala, all the way to the Dublin Wicklow border. So yeah, it's a nice part of the world. Okay, and uh, um, a director as Dara did, which is which is Connor's clips, um, and uh, this is um, Andrew McGinley. Yeah, yeah the, the dad Dara of, of the of the kids who were who were. It's unspeakable. Um, what what happened to the children? Um, Emma, what what's what's the what's the connection there? Yeah, it was um, Andrew and I were put in touch um god january maybe t- two januarys ago it was during covid just coming after christmas and my background is the charity sector and andrew was putting together a charity he was putting together three projects and um we had a very long conversation and he put a board around him um to start up as dara did so it's um it's a gorgeous little charity actually that um raises funds to increase participation um in all walks of community life from sport to dance to um mental health to any any community group so what we do is kind of raise funds um and people apply for grants and community organizations apply for grants and we support different projects that are all kind of working towards um diversity and inclusion in the community and participation so um yeah it's a it's a it's a great charity dara was involved in everything he was andrew would always say that he was involved in the GAA played hurling for commercials and he was involved in Rock Cool Boys and he was um he was in the Scouts and uh, as Andrew always said he loved a, a can of a can of a can of fizzy drink and a bag of crisps and he'd go to the opening of a paper bag. Um so he set up the charity in Dara's name. So yeah, it's a it's a brilliant charity. We actually had Daniel O'Donnell last week um as a secret gig out in Newcastle Community Centre, if you'd believe that. Um and I've never laughed so much uh, in an hour and a half as I did that night. Uh, he was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, was a raffled uh, tickets for the gig and he came out as a secret location. Um you know, I'd say he's never done a, a more quirky venue in his life, but um yeah, it was a brilliant night. But uh, yeah, it's like it's we're now kind of a year and a half in in um year and a half going, uh, supporting 40 projects right across nationally, right across the country. Oh. Um and the La- latest granting round has just closed as well so we'll be inter- increasing that by another 15 projects so um yeah a great great charity great projects yeah fantastic um uh, as you know it, it, he's a man uh, from afar his strength is just absolutely incredible and, and how he keeps the memories uh, of those kids alive is beautiful some of the clips on that page at connor's clips if you're not following on twitter it's 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 phenomenal stuff um emma we might delve into uh the world of um learn to lead and how you found that experience when we're back uh in in the not too distant future but for now guys i want to thank you for your time today emma murphy and michelle ryan looking forward to the looking back on last weekend's action and looking ahead to what lies in store next weekend thanks a million guys Here's Jackie. Thanks, Jackie.